Hey, movie buffs. Today, let's dive into the 1953 sci-fi classic. It came from outer space. No need for fancy words here, just the good stuff. Picture this a small town, a mysterious crash, and a strange alien presence. Our protagonist, John, stumbles upon something out of this world. What follows is a mix of funny, shocking, and even sad moments that'll keep you glued to your seat. Ever wondered about that one scene that stuck with you? Or maybe you've got a cherished memory linked to this flick. Share it in the comments below. We want to hear your stories and experiences the good, the bad, and the out of this world. So, buckle up for a ride filled with nostalgia and emotions. Stay tuned for some interesting tidbits. And remember, we're all ears for your tales. Ready to explore the depths of it came from outer space. Your stories make this journey even better. Share away and let's get the conversation going. In the early 1950s, there was a movie that really shook things up. It was about aliens coming to Earth, and people couldn't stop talking about it. This movie wasn't just entertainment. It made people think about space and what might be out there. After it came out, lots of books, comics, and toys were made based on the same idea. It was like a whole new world of stories opened up because of this movie. Even now, you can still see its influence in movies and TV shows. It's like a part of our culture that's never going away. The music score accompanying the first view of the crater site in this film would later become the recognizable weekly theme for New York's WNU-TV version of Creature Features from the mid-60s to the early 70s. It aired alongside classic universal films of Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi, and Lon Chaney Jr., as well as other horror films like The City of the Dead, The Four Skulls of Jonathan Drake, and House on Haunted Hill. Despite inconsistencies between story locations and shooting locations, the production team showed foresight by putting Arizona license plates on the cars. Russell Johnson and Kathleen Hughes, although not sharing a scene in this movie, had previously worked together on Screen In for Men Only, which was Johnson's film debut. They would later be castmates again in an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents titled Vicious Circle. In the film, the protagonist drives a 1952 Ford Crestline convertible. Richard Carlson, known for his roles in several 50s sci-fi horror films, including this one, appeared in only six movies between 1951 and 1954. He speaks to the audience in a separately filmed trailer discussing the film and the three-dimension technology with animated sequences illustrating the effect. The 1952 Ford Crestline convertible, prominently featured in the movie, adds a touch of vintage charm to the scenes, reflecting the era's automotive aesthetic. As he navigates the eerie landscapes and encounters otherworldly phenomena, the car becomes not just a mode of transportation, but a symbol of resilience in the face of the unknown. Its sleek lines and classic design evoke a sense of nostalgia, transporting viewers back to a time when sci-fi cinema was in its infancy. Through its lens, we witness a world on the brink of discovery, where anything seems possible, even encounters with extraterrestrial beings. But Came From Outer Space offers a captivating glimpse into the imagination of 50s audiences and remains a timeless classic in the annals of science fiction cinema. Rejected by Universal International's makeup department, an alien design intended for the 1953 movie found new life as the mutant in this island Earth. The studio executives opted for a different extraterrestrial look, leading to an unexpected role for the discarded concept. In a moment of cinematic illusion, the spaceship's destructive scene was not a product of special effects, but a real newsreel shot. The footage captured the HMS Barham's explosion after a torpedo attack in November 1941. This use of historical footage added a layer of realism to the movie's portrayal of an extraterrestrial threat. The influence of it came from outer space extended beyond the silver screen. The Hellenic pop duo Fantastic Something drew inspiration from the movie, adopting their name from a memorable line spoken in the film that Fantastic Something. This connection highlights the film's impact, transcending its role as mere entertainment. These anecdotes shed light on the unexpected twists and turns behind the scenes, and the diverse ways in which the movie has left its mark on both film history and popular culture. In a desert town back in 1953, a movie hit the screens that changed the game for Universal Studios. It was the first time they tried out 3D technology, and they chose a fictional place called Sand Rock, Arizona as the backdrop. The main actor, Richard Carlson, often gets mixed up with another actor, Richard Denning, who starred in similar sci-fi films. Interestingly, they both ended up working together in Creature from the Black Lagoon the next year. The movie It Came From Outer Space blurs the line between real life and fiction as it tells the story of an alien encounter in Sand Rock. The 3D effects were a big deal back then, making the movie stand out. 
as the story unfolds, viewers get sucked into the action happening in this imaginary town. The chemistry between Carlson and Denning adds to the excitement, making the movie even more memorable. So, if you ever get a chance to watch this old classic, keep an eye out for those 3D effects and enjoy the ride. In the Mojave River Narrows in Victorville, CA, the opening aerial shot sets the scene. The camera captures the town's view, with D Street leading northwest, flanked by the railroad tracks and the Mojave River on the right. USHWI 66 turns left off of HWI 18, heading southeast towards the Cajun Pass. The airport scene unfolds at the old Apple Valley Airport near HWI 18, opposite the Roy Rogers Apple Valley Inn. This airport also housed Sky King's plane Songbird during that time. Barbara Rush stands out among actors for her roles in both versions of The Outer Limits. She portrayed Leonora Edmond in The Forms of Things Unknown and Barbara Matheson in The Balance of Nature. Additionally, the sheriff's speech about murders occurring at 92 degrees Fahrenheit resonates from Bradbury's short story Touched by Fire from October Country. In the world of classic entertainment, a certain 1953 film holds a connection to a popular television show of the 1960s. In this film, a collaboration between the director and one of the actors foreshadowed their later work together on a well-known TV program. Notably, a key cast member from the movie completed her education at the University of California, Santa Barbara, in 1948. Additionally, another actor from the film left behind a unique legacy, as evidenced by the sympathy notes received from bookstores upon his passing due to his love for reading. It's intriguing how these seemingly disparate connections reveal the intricate web of relationships in the entertainment industry. The registration number assigned to the helicopter now shows that it was exported to New Zealand in 1959. In 2010, the registration number N189B was reassigned to a fixed-wing aircraft. One of the higher qualities of the film was the smooth intercutting between footage of real desert highway locations and the realistic studio representations of the same locales, often in the same scene. Kathleen Hughes was in only one scene with a couple of spoken lines, but she was included in the montage of featured players at the end of the film, likely because she was Universal International's potential answer to Marilyn Monroe and the studio was grooming her for stardom. In the movie, the sheriff's office is situated in the same building on MGM's courthouse square back lot, previously seen as the diner in Back to the Future. Interestingly, while the diner's entrance was on the far right corner, the sheriff's entrance is on the far left side of the building. This spatial switch adds a layer of familiarity for movie buffs. Unlike many films of its time, this one chose to display its credits at the end rather than at the beginning, a departure from the norm in American cinema during the 1950s. Barbara Rush, a notable figure in the cast, honed her acting skills at the Pasadena Playhouse School for Performing Arts in Pasadena, California. This background likely contributed to her performance in the film. These tidbits offer insights into the production and cast of the movie, enhancing the viewer's appreciation for the film's setting and talent. 